So if you look at any professional app, you'll see a very, very consistent design. That is in terms of the elements they've used, the spacing system they have, the interactions such as the button hovers. We'll be doing the same in the workplace because we want to become professional developers and styles cannot be overlooked. Okay, let's jump in and see what's available to us. So I'm gonna click on the styles tab and we can see under element styles, we have exactly that, all of the elements available to us. Go down and open up the buttons folder, then click on the primary button. You can see that Bubble have already set up a style for us. Currently, the text is set to Open Sans. Now, if it's not set to Enter, what I'd like you to do, please, is head across to the Styles Variables, and then on the drop-down, choose Enter. Enter is a lovely font used by many tech companies, super clean, and we're using it throughout this course. So this is basically the default area where whenever there is a style, Bubble will attach Enter as a font if that style has a font. Let's head back to the element styles. So let's look at the attributes of this button. What can be applied from a style perspective? So we've now set a default app font of Enter and Bubble have updated it here. Perfect. We also have the weight of the text. So if I change this to regular, you can see that this the weighting of the text has changed. Let me zoom in here so we can see exactly what we're working with. I'm actually going to set this to a medium. Let's change the size to 16. That is the text size. Alignment is currently in the center. That's what we're after. We can also bold it, italicize and underline it if we like. The color of the font needs to have a great contrast, so we do need white here. We're not going to be using these particular options, but it's the background flat color that is currently set to primary to match the purpose of the button. Let's change the rounds to eight. And let's remove the outset, which we won't be using in this course. Now there are other attributes that we can assign to this button, such as the layout. The padding looks great to me, 8-8 eight, eight, top bottom, 16-16 16, 16, left and right. And we also have a conditionals tab, which we'll get to soon, which enables us to control some of the interactive components of this button, such as what happens when the button's hovered. And in this instance, we'll be changing it to darker color. Now, we don't actually know what the overall look and feel when we first start building would be. But by using styles from the very beginning, we can then change our minds later on and populate styles throughout the app. This button we've just styled might be used in 100 locations uh, as you build out your app, okay? Not in this course, but in a realistic application build. We don't wanna to have to go through all of those pages individually changing that button. We wanna do it from the central location. This is why styles are very important and throughout the course whenever we introduce a new element or a new input form to our user interface we will be then adjusting the style to make sure that it's uniform so these are all of the styles available to us we've got drop downs file uploaders both of which we'll be using groups images pop-ups text repeating groups we'll be using styles as much as possible Please click across to the style variables. So we've set our app text as enter, but I'd also like to set the particular colors that I've chosen for our application. So feel free to copy and paste these colors across from my demo app. The link is in the description. Keep it open in the same tab, in the same browser. You can just open that particular app, go to the styles tab, copy and paste the color into your new app. So here I am in the colors in the demo app, and I'm just going to highlight this color. Command C on my keypad. I'm gonna come over here and paste it in. Command V. Okay, I'd like you to do the same for all of these other colors, and I'm just gonna speed up the section so we can move on.
Okay, so you've copied it across all the colors and let's just have a look to see how we would attach these colors to our styles. So on element styles, you can see that the button color, the blue has slightly changed away from the bubble blue to the particular brand of this app that we're building. If we bring up, for instance, a text element, open the text container, click on heading one, you can see that our text has now changed to 171717. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is just update our text styles, okay, which we'll be using throughout the app. It needs to be consistent. So we'll do the same thing. We're going to pop into my particular app. We're going to copy a style and then we're going to paste it into this app that we're building. So I'm in the demo app. I'm going to scroll down to heading one. I'm going to right click, copy. I'm going to tab back into my current app I'm building. Here I am, and I'm going to right click paste just on top of this heading one. And you can see it's named it heading one copy. Before we rename heading one copy, go to the your older style and just click on the bin icon and then choose OK. Now we can go back and we can just rename this by double clicking on it, heading one. I'd like you to please repeat this process for heading one, two, three, as well as the body, okay? When you get to body, there are three body styles I'd like you to copy across. We have body medium, body large, and body small. So you can delete the existing body from your app and then copy across these three body texts, and then we're done. Okay, and after you've done that, you can click on body medium and set it as the default, which I've currently done. By the way, you can also change the naming of these styles just by double clicking on the text itself. Okay guys, that's all we're going to deal with styles for now. The styles will develop as the build develops. I'll see you in the next lesson.